long, but do you understand, we're actually living, uh, we're probably living in the first generation, the first generation in human history where all the things of, uh, that John, the Apostle John, was talking about in the book of Revelation can actually happen. Uh, when John, when John, 2,000 years ago, when John was talking about uh, a nation with an army of 200 million, 200 million, there was no, there was no nation that had an army of 200 million people 2,000 years ago in uh, the Apostle John's time. Oh, but now we do. Now we do. Certainly China, possibly India, possibly Russia, but certainly China certainly has the ability to have a 200 million uh, person army. So that's come true. But probably, probably the one single item that this is definitely the first generation in all of human history where it could become true from the book of Revelation is when the Apostle John talked about the two witnesses, the two witnesses in Jerusalem in the end times. During the tribulation in the end times, there are two of God's witnesses who uh, bring down fire from heaven and stop the rains and have a lot of power, but they are killed. Two witnesses are killed and uh, John tells us in the book of Revelation, two witnesses are killed and their bodies lay dead in the streets in Jerusalem. And the Apostle John tells us in Revelation that all the world, all the world saw those two witnesses laying there dead for a few days in Jerusalem and they celebrated. Uh, well, that was not possible. John was talking about something that was not possible 2,000 years ago nor 200 years ago. The entire world simultaneously being able to see uh, to see two men in a street in Jerusalem laying dead for a few days? Not possible unless you were within uh, maybe a two day horse ride of Jerusalem. Anyone outside of that range could not have seen uh, those two witnesses lying there in Jerusalem. But that's what John said. Well, even, even when the age of satellite television came about, maybe you could say that was the first opportunity. But even then, everybody across the globe didn't have a TV or electricity. Let me tell you something. Uh, I've been to Haiti a couple of times, and even the people who are sitting uh, in a dirt, dirt-floored hut, who don't even know where their next meal is coming from in Haiti, Oddly enough, they almost all have one thing, and that's what you have in your pocket, a cell phone. Even in the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere, all the people who hardly have two cents to scratch together, somehow still all have a cell phone. So we are literally living in the first generation in human history when the events, uh, as spoken of by the Apostle John in the book of Revelation, uh, they could actually come true right now. First generation, the time might be running out. So let today be the day of salvation, folks. I know we look like a bunch of kooks. We're, we're fully aware. We're not delusional. We're not deranged. Uh, we have normal jobs and normal families, believe it or not. Uh, we're not deranged. We come out here with big banners and bright shirts and all so that we can draw attention to the message because it's more important than not being mocked. But the time is running out, folks. It's serious. God is going to judge the world in righteousness. And understand, don't believe that just because you believe you're a nice person, your parents think you're awesome, your friends think you're awesome, that you're okay with God. Jesus himself tells us that most people will end up in the lake of fire. That's right. Not that he wants them there. Not that he chooses for them to go there. People go to the lake of fire because they choose They choose the self-gratification, the quick and easy and cowardly choice of sin and instant gratification that sin gives you over obedience to God. Jesus said, broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many go that way. But narrow is the path. Straight is the gate that leads to everlasting life, and few there be that find it. Few. So please... Do not, do not take for granted that you are on that broad road leading to this, uh, the broad road, or 
take for granted that you're on the narrow path leading to everlasting life. When the vast, vast, vast majority of people are on a broad road leading to destruction. You know, like the one side of the banner talks about, if you're on this list, you're in trouble with God. If you are on that list even one time, you are in trouble with God. We know that there's a lot of sexual perverts out here on campus. A lot of fornicators. A lot of homosexuals. A lot of porn freaks. Understand, you know, God created sex and it's a good and wonderful thing, but only to be used in the parameters that God has given us. God was actually the creator of sex, but he's given us parameters. Jesus said that, uh, that a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, and what God has brought together let no man tear asunder. There are many things that tear God's plan asunder. Sex before marriage tears that plan asunder. Uh, adultery after marriage tears that plan asunder. Homosexuality tears that plan asunder. God has given us gifts like sex to enjoy within parameters. Just like you have a new fire pit. You have a new fire pit over here on Sanford Mall. Fire is a good and wonderful thing when it's kept within its parameters and its purpose. That's how sex is. See, when, when you let sex get outside of God's good and righteous parameters, people die, people get venereal diseases, uh, you have unwanted pregnancies, and then girls get abortions and kill their babies. Good, clean fun on a Friday night getting laid and some baby's going to die for it. Marriages are destroyed. Brains are destroyed. Children are killed because you let sex get out outside of its parameters. Fire. Fire, a good and wonderful thing inside of its parameters. Keep it in the fire pit. It's awesome. Nice to sit around. Keeps you warm. Keep your fire inside your fireplace. Warms your house. Keep a fire inside of a furnace. You can actually refine silver and gold with fire. A good and wonderful thing in its parameters. Let fire get outside of it. Get, let the fire go get into the, the dorm room or the student hall. Let it get into the library. And now it's chaos. Now it's anarchy. Now it's destruction and death. That's what happens when you let, when you let your life and the desires of your flesh and your mind get outside See, dude, right? of the parameters that God has set. See, uh, the Bible tells us that there is pleasure in sin, but it's only for a season. The devil's not stupid. He knows that sin is pleasurable. Pornography, this is him. This is the truth. Uh, so, sin is pleasurable. The Bible even admits it. The devil, uh, the Bible says that there is pleasure in sin, but only for a season. And in the end, the wage of your sin is death. Looking at pornography releases dopamine and endorphins in your brain. It's pleasurable. But in the end, you're going to rewire your brain. You're going to have uh, erectile dysfunction. You're going to not be able to uh, have a normal relationship with someone of the opposite sex anymore. You're going to need weirder and weirder, harder and harder porn and harder sin. So if you're on that list, you are in a lot of trouble with God. Get off of that list. Jesus Christ said, I am the way the truth, the life, no man comes to the Father but by me. The Bible says, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given much among men by which we must be saved. So that's the good news, folks. We brought you the game plan of salvation. For all you folks who want to say we're just out here preaching hate, just uh, calling people names and all. No, we're out here. We're telling you the bad news so we can tell you what the good news is. You know, if, uh, if I went to a, a cancer surgeon and had tests done, if the cancer surgeon found out that I had a very deadly form of cancer, but it was operable and could be cured, I would want that cancer surgeon to have the courage to tell me, hey, 
you got this cancer, we can have surgery, we need to do it right away, we can get that out of you, you'll be good to go. Great. Hey, telling me I have cancer may be bad news, but I would not call that cancer surgeon a hater because he told me the bad news about my cancer. Now we can put a plan into action to solve the problem. You know what type of cancer surgeon I would really hate to go to? One who didn't, who worried about my feelings more than my health. One who didn't want me sad. Right. If a ca cancer surgeon said, wow, that guy looks really nice, telling him about that cancer is really gonna bum him out and wreck his day, and I don't wanna do that. Ah, he looks like a guy I'd like to, you know, hey, become friends with. And he says, you are the picture of health. You are doing awesome. If everyone could be like you, that would be Jesse awesome. Morales. See, that's what happens. You surround yourself with people who are like you and tell you you're fine. That's what the people have done throughout all of time. They told the prophet Isaiah. They knew Isaiah was actually speaking from God. They told the prophet Isaiah that don't prophesy to us right things. Don't tell us what God has actually told you. It's too hard to hear. They told Isaiah, prophesy to us deceits. Tell us smooth things prophesied deceits. The people told the prophet Isaiah they would rather have a comfortable lie than a hard truth. That's what people have done in America and across the globe. They would rather hear a comforting lie than a hard truth. Well, we're not out here to develop friendships. We're out here to tell you a hard truth right. so that you can know the good news. Good. And the good news is, if you're on this list, you can get off of it. The good news is, is that a hell-bound sinner can be a heaven-bound saint. And Jesse, if you'll turn that so they can see that side. There's your game plan of salvation, Drew Clement. Uh, you need to repent. Repent is turning from your sin. Not saying you're sorry on Sunday morning, knowing you're gonna go back into your sin. Just save it. God doesn't want to hear that kind of garbage. God doesn't want to hear your phony repentance on Sunday morning if you know you're going to go back into your drunkenness and fornication and cheating and stealing the rest of the week. Save it. Repentance is turning 180 degrees, hating what you used to love, loving what you used to hate. Uh, you need to surrender to Jesus. Not just say, hey, I know you're there, Jesus. You need to surrender to him. You need to let him be on the throne of your life and say, where you tell me to go, I'll go. Where you tell me to, uh, what you tell me to say, I'll say. You need to stop your sinning. Jesus told the woman caught in adultery to go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Not sin less, not just you know, as long as you're uh, sinning less than the worst person you know, no. Go and sin no more. You need to fear God. Jesus said, do not fear him who kills your body and can do no more. Fear him who can kill your body and afterwards cast you into hell. Yes, I say fear him. There's and devil. you need to live holy. The Bible says that without holiness, no man shall see God. Mom. Without holiness, no man shall see God. So who's ready? There's your good news. For all you people who tell us we're just haters, we're out here to tell you Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. But we're also out here to tell you that if you do not repent, there will be no hope for you on Judgment Day. And we're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised another breath in your lungs. Get right with God today before it's too late. Who's ready? Who's ready for some repentance? guys born again Christians over here? Sure. All right, are you sharing your faith with this campus? This campus is like a, like a swamp of non-Christians around here. I hope you guys are courageous enough to actually tell these people how to be saved. Tell them both the bad news and the good news. That's your job. We can only be up here once in a great while. We all live all over the place. It's your job. You got your work cut out for you. All right, so who's ready?